God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I prepared a message uh, using the gospel lesson from the three-year lectionary, which is different than what I just read a moment ago. So I'm going to give you a second gospel lesson today, which is from Luke. The themes are similar, so uh, it will be easy for me to weave the two together. If I don't forget, I will do just that. But let me read from Luke chapter 13, verses 31 to 38, which many other churches are thinking about today. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often have I longed to gather your children together. As a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left desolate to you. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This too is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, we live in a dangerous world. It's all too familiar with you, I believe. Um, we've seen in the news the, about nation rising up against nation. We see in our own societies people rising up against people. We faced for the last couple of years a pandemic which has struck close to home for many of you and, and me. It's a dangerous world we live in for all of those reasons. But even more so, it's a dangerous world we live in because of what Paul says to us in Ephesians chapter 6. As we see the strife between individuals and the strife between nations, Paul reminds us in Ephesians 6 by saying, we fight and wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and principalities and powers of this dark world and against the authorities and powers in the heavenly realm. So not only do we face earthly kinds of challenges and dangers, but we also face the spiritual dangers of the wicked one, and I dare say that is even more dangerous than what we see in the news. Our gospel lesson talks about dealing with dangerous times. And Jesus shows us how he responded to the dangerous times that he was in. The context is, is this, that Jesus is somewhere. We don't know exactly. Maybe he is in Jerusalem, maybe somewhere else. But the Pharisees come up to him and let him know that he faces danger, that Herod wants to kill him. It was a dangerous time for Jesus because Herod, King Herod, was threatened, as all kings were in those days, particularly these ones in the land of Israel. And so they would get rid of anybody who seemed to be rising up from their midst and challenging their authority. And Jesus, because he was attracting so many people after him and doing so many amazing things, that he became a threat to Herod. Now, we don't really understand whether or not the Pharisees wanted to drive him out also because they were threatened by him or whether it was some kind of just a warning that the Pharisees were giving to Jesus. But regardless, Jesus faced 
opposition and it was a dangerous time for him as well. And how did he respond to that danger? How did he respond to Herod? He addresses only Herod right now. Uh, through the Pharisees, he tells them, you go and you talk to Herod, that fox, that wise one politically. You go and talk to him and then Jesus says, you tell him two things, two things. And we're going to look at both of those. First of all, what he says is, is my ministry will be completed. That's one thing. And then he says, evil will not stop me. That's the second thing. Let's look at both. The first one, ministry, my ministry will be completed. Jesus says, go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow and on the third day I will reach my goal. It's very interesting the choice of words that Jesus uses here, uh, particularly about the third day. Now in just a moment you'll hear Jesus say this, he says, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, which is the third day. But Jesus here in the first sentence and in the first part of his message to Herod, he uses this little phrase, and on the third day, I will reach my goal. Now that's, I believe, a reference to something bigger than just a day after tomorrow. Jesus is going to accomplish his ministry. But he won't accomplish that ministry until he's been in the grave for three days. And when he comes out of that grave, that's when his ministry will be completed. And what's the nature of that ministry? Well, he says this, he says, I will keep on driving out demons. So demon oppressed people, that is those things in the spiritual realm will give way to my authority and I will deliver people from their influence. That's what his ministry is about. And he goes on also, he says, not only will I deliver people from demonic influence in their lives, I will also heal people today and tomorrow. That is, I will deliver them from earthly, physical kinds of trials as well that people face. That's Jesus' ministry. He is a deliverer. And he has come into the world to deliver people from the effects of sin in this world. And Jesus wants Herod to know that in no way was Herod going to get in the way of him moving to complete that ultimate ministry perspective. Not just driving out demons, not just healing bodies, but rather delivering the whole world from the influence of sin in their lives and the accompanying punishment which should come. And that was ultimately completed after he died and suffered and endured the pain of that punishment and then after he rose from the dead on the third day. And Jesus says, Herod, you're not stopping me in that ministry. That was the first message. And then the second part, also, evil will not stop me. This is what I'm going to do, Jesus said, just according to the plan. Evil will not change God's plan. God has a very specific plan. He says this, he says, uh, in any case, I must press on today and tomorrow. And now he refers to the third actual 24 hour period. And the next day, I'm going to keep going. I'm not leaving here because I'm running away, but rather, I'm going to proceed with the plan today and tomorrow and the next day and ultimately I will arrive to Jerusalem. Because he says, no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Herod, I'm not running away from you, Jesus says. 
Because in the end, I know what God's plan is. I understand that plan. I must go to Jerusalem, according to God's plan, and I must be killed there, Jesus knows. He understands it completely. And in this little saying here, this second message comes through loud and clear. Herod, no matter what your plans are for me, I'm here to tell you that I'm not fleeing from you, but rather I'm following the plan of God. I will march today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day doing what God's will is until I arrive in Jerusalem where God's plan will be completed. Jesus, in the context and confronted with a threat in his physical being and a threat to the ministry, he comes out and says, I'm not worried about worldly issues and powers. Not even the rulers and principalities and the, the powers of darkness in this world, none of them, nor the political rulers in this world, none of those things. I will complete what it is that God wants me to complete. And then he concludes the message, speaking actually to the people. He said, even though I'm above that, oh, I just wish, I just wish I could come and gather you together because this is the reason why I'll complete my ministry of deliverance. This is the reason why I'm going to follow God's plan and ultimately end up in Jerusalem and die. This is the reason why I'm doing things and will not let anyone in this world or the powers of this world stop me. The reason is, is because I want to gather you. I want to take you under my wings. I want to keep you safe from those kinds of authorities in this world and the spiritual demons of this world. I'm a God who's come into the world to set you free from that kind of worry and love you in that way. That's why it is that he would not be stopped. That's why it is that Herod would not succeed. That's why it is that the demonic forces of our world today will not succeed either. Because Jesus came into the world to gather people together under his caring wing. And to protect them from those forces of evil. And it's there that's good news, isn't it? For you and me in a dangerous world where nation rises up against nation. And even in our own society where people rise up against people. And where the forces of darkness, the principalities and the rulers and the powers of this world come and cause their evil wickedness to fracture people and injure people. In this dangerous world where there are illnesses and viruses and all kinds of problems that we face, it's good news, isn't it? That Jesus has come, completed his ministry of deliverance, and was not stopped in his ministry by any power 2,000 years ago. But before I go further, let me ask a question. Um, where are you right now? under that message that Jesus gives today, saying, I'm here and I'm wanting to cover you up as you face the, the worries and the challenges and the problems of this world. As you face the dangers of this world, how are you feeling about that? Are you feeling like you're covered by this God who says, I've come into the world to cover you up with my wings just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings? And are you letting him do it? The people of Jerusalem didn't. They said, oh, no, 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 no. We aren't going to let you, Jesus, care for us because they didn't believe in him. They didn't think that he was the one that God was going to or did send into the world 
to deliver them and to protect them for all eternity. So they turned their back on Jesus and they said, no, we don't think you're the one to protect us and usher in a, a kingdom. They rejected him. But I'm back to you. What about you? In the midst of our dangerous world, you know, where we and you and I both fret about what in the world is going on because of the war over in Europe, or what in the world is going on because of inflation, or what in the world is going on here when budgets are stretched and money is too small, what in the world is going on here when we hear about the divisions of our world and all the untruths that are being taught and where we watch so many people seem to be caught up in those kinds of untruths of lifestyle and behavior. And it's bothersome and it's worrisome. And it's at that particular moment, it's so easy to say, I just don't believe that Jesus can cover me and take care of all those dangerous things I'm faced with. Right? Instead, it's easy to worry and try and position yourself somehow to manage it, to handle it. And I dare say to you, if you do that, if you don't find security under Jesus, then aren't you just like the people of Jerusalem who would not come under his wing? It's a problem for all of us. And that's why God comes to you today to remind you all over again that 2,000 years ago when Jesus faced a dangerous world, those who wanted to stop him and kill him, those who wanted him to change the plan, alter, his, alter God's plan by implementing his own to keep him safe, um, he wants to remind you that he didn't. And why didn't he? Well, it's so that you could be safe. So that you could be under his wings now. So that you could be confident even now that despite the problems in our world with nation fighting against nation, viruses and illnesses all around, people rising up against people, that no matter how bad it gets, Jesus has delivered you from those worries. And he wants to gather you under his wings because that's why he died. And that's why he rose again. So that you could be confident that because your sin has been paid for, the punishment is over, gone, because he's alive and in our world active, and not in our world, but in your world as well, inviting you to come and say, hide under my wings in this dangerous world. And I promise to you, I will not leave you desolate, but I will give you a heart filled with joy and a peace which surpasses all human understanding. And that's what Jesus offers to you today. So people of God climb under that wing. No matter how bad the news gets, no matter how scary the situation, no matter how high the inflation rate, no matter how problematic and difficult as it is to listen to what's happening in our own society, when you're faced with all of those things and tempted to say, I've got to take care of them on my own, at that, remember, at that time, remember, that Jesus completed his ministry of deliverance and God's plan for you. And you are safe. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.